Hello and welcome STEM engineers. Today we are going to be designing Little Red Riding Hood's basket and we're going to be hearing the story of Little Red Riding Hood and it's actually a different variation of Little Red Riding Hood. I'll get to that in a minute. What you're going to need for today's activity are two sheets of paper, either a stapler which is what I prefer to use or some tape, and 10 weights. In my classroom I usually use rocks for weights but I'm at home right now so I have these gemstones and I'm going to be using those as the weights. And my challenge is going to be to design a basket that can carry and transport 10 of those weights and the challenge is that you have to walk with that basket 30 steps and make sure that you don't lose anything out of the basket and that the basket is big enough and strong enough to hold those 10 weights. Now, we're also going to hear the story of Little Red Riding Hood, but this is a variation on the story of Little Red Riding Hood. This one's going to be a little bit different. It is called um, Super Red Riding Hood, so I hope you enjoy it. Now, I have made my Little Red Riding Hood basket out of two sheets of paper, and you can see that I've stapled it together. One sheet I made um, into kind of the pocket part of the basket, and the other sheet I folded and have it cut in two different pieces and I made the handle. So now it's time to see, will it hold 10 of my gemstones? And I'm pretty sure it will. I made a big basket. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. It will hold it. And now I have to do my walking test and see if this is gonna be strong enough. I'm a little concerned about the handle, but I think the bottom of the bag is, is going to be um, a strong enough basket. I'm just not positive the handle's gonna work. If I can do this with 10 stones, I'm gonna challenge myself and see if I can add 20 of my gemstones and then 30, 40, 50, let's see how much this basket can hold. And if it doesn't hold, that's part of the engineering design process. What are we gonna do? Put this in the recycling bin, get two new sheets of paper, and start all over again. Have fun with it! Not far from here, near a small forest, lives a girl named Ruby. Ruby's favorite color is red. She loves red berries, her red boots, and especially the red cloak her grandma made for her. When Ruby puts on her red cloak, she becomes Super Red Riding Hood. One sunny afternoon, Ruby was very busy playing superhero in her room when she heard her mother call from downstairs. Ruby! Is it something important, Mom? She called back. It sure is. Looks like Super Red Riding Hood has an important mission, Ruby declared. She threw on her red cloak and grabbed her flashlight. A superhero must be prepared for anything. You've been indoors all day, her mother said. Why don't you go pick some raspberries to have with your snack? This did not sound like an important mission to Ruby, but she could see that her mom meant business. Ruby kissed her mom goodbye and set out along the path to the raspberry bushes with her lunchbox in hand. The woods are deep and dark and full of danger, Ruby said to herself, but Super Red Riding Hood is never scared. Ruby was marching along bravely when, oh no! Ruby's big red rubber boot almost crushed a tiny snail in the middle of the path. This is a dangerous place for a little snail, she said. Luckily, Super Red Riding Hood is here to rescue you. She carefully moved the little snail out of harm's way. A good deed is done, she said. Ruby skipped toward the woods. Who's afraid of the deep dark woods, the deep dark woods, the deep dark woods? Who's afraid of the deep dark woods? Na na na, not me, she sang. When she got to the edge of the forest, she stopped and peered ahead. A chill drifted out from the shadowy darkness. A superhero must be silent like a cat and watch out for danger, Ruby whispered and tiptoed into the woods. The forest was full of strange noises. It was a good thing she'd remembered to bring her flashlight. Woo-hoo! Crack! Owl, twig, woodpecker, she said aloud, shining her bright light toward the different sounds. Who's afraid of the deep dark woods, the deep dark woods, the deep dark woods? Who's afraid of the deep dark woods? Na, 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 not me, she sang as she walked. Before long, she came to a sunny clearing packed with raspberry bushes. She ran to fill her lunchbox with the juicy red berries. Mission accomplished, she said triumphantly. She was just snapping her lunchbox closed when she heard a new sound, a big, rumbly, growly, 
terrifying sound. Ruby's tummy twisted into a knot. Her teeth began to chatter. A superhero must be brave, she reminded herself. Who's afraid of the wolf? He towered over Ruby, looking frightful with his sharp claws, his yellow fangs, and his bushy tail swinging from side to side. The wolf inched closer. Soon he was so close to Ruby, she could feel his steamy breath on her face. Excuse me, I'd like to get by, Ruby said in a smaller voice than she would have liked. The wolf didn't move. He grinned and asked in a crackly growl, Where are you going all alone in this big, dark forest? Ruby narrowed her eyes and peered at the shaggy beast. Why do you want to know? Oh, I'm just curious, I suppose. Maybe you can tell me this. What's in the box? Before she could answer, the wolf lunged. Quick as a rabbit, Super Red Riding Hood hopped out of the way and used her super skills to leap and dart past the tricky wolf. She scrambled up an oak tree and perched on a branch just out of the wolf's reach. While she sat and caught her breath, the grumbly wolf skulked around the trunk of the tree. Ruby had had enough. Wolf, she called down, let me pass. But the wolf stayed put. Wolf, I'm going to count to five. You'd better leave me alone. The wolf still didn't move. One, Ruby said firmly. Two, three, four. He could see that Ruby meant business. Okay, I'll leave you alone. Ruby started climbing back down the tree, but then, growl. Wolf? It's it's my tummy, the wolf moaned. I'm just really hungry. Well, why didn't you say so? Ruby jumped out of the tree, her red cloak floating down behind her like a parachute. If you want to have some of my snack, you could have just asked, she said. The wolf looked at Ruby with a big drooly smile. Okay, can I have some? he asked, holding out a paw. Ruby pulled her lunchbox out of the wolf's reach. Not so fast, wolf. You really scared me before, snarling at me with your big fangs and those sharp claws. The wolf's ears drooped. He looked at the ground. I'm sorry, he said. Ruby took a long look at the sad, hungry wolf. Oh, forget about it, she said at last. The wolf perked up. Please, he asked very politely. A superhero always helps those in need. So Super Red Riding Hood did what any superhero would do. She popped open her lunchbox and shared the juicy berries. As Ruby and the wolf snacked together under the big oak tree, Ruby remarked, I didn't know wolves liked raspberries. Oh, yes, said the wolf cheerfully. They're our favorite. The wolf sat thinking for a little while as he munched. I didn't know little girls could be superheroes, he said. Oh, yes, Ruby said with a smile. We can. Now that book, Super Red Riding Hood, came from um, the Epic Book website. That is free to teachers and students and has really been helpful in me getting my hands on books that otherwise I would have gone to the library to check out because sometimes during this pandemic my library has been closed. Other times they don't have a book that I want and interlibrary loan has not been available. So that's a really great place to have tons and tons of books at your disposal. When I typed in Little Red Riding Hood, 14 different titles, versions of that story came up at different reading levels, so that was handy to have. 